Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Blitz Growth. Today, really excited to have Raj here. He is a three-time book author, course creator, has a PhD in philosophy and marketing, and all round has a ton of value to share with us today. We're going to go through data, marketing automation, analytics, and how to grow your business, social profile, channel, or store. We're really going to leave, you know, just one or two big tips that's going to help you improve your marketing strategies or help you grow your business in some way or how. So Raj, thank you so much for joining. Thank you for having me, Jack. It's a pleasure to be here. So I really appreciate it. And what we do uh, when everybody starts on this podcast, we always ask them for that kind of one one line or sentence elevator pitch to explain what value they can bring to someone uh, who they're talking to or they're lecturing or so, something like that. So what's your kind of like elevator pitch in, in how you're going to help everybody today? Sure. That's a, <laughs> that's a good way to begin. Uh, so let me give it a shot. Uh, so I help firms achieve growth and meet strategic objectives by uh, effectively using data about their customers and marketing. Nice. How's that? Yeah, well, it's... (laughs) One sentence. uh, Yeah, no, it did very well. And, (laughs) you know, data is all the talk these days. Um, So very excited about this episode to kind of learn a little bit more about how data works, how to better use it, and... I think there's a lot of stuff that people aren't using in terms of data. So let's start in where you got started. How come you got into data and marketing, automation, analytics, all these sorts of things? Like it's not necessarily like, you know, a kid's dream to grow up into this occupation, but it's one of the most important positions in a lot of these big companies today. So how did you sort of get into, you know, the marketing automation and uh, marketing uh, data and analytics? Sure. So I, started as a computer engineer so that's my undergrad and um, i when i pursued graduate degrees uh, i ended up in marketing pursuing a phd but i was at that time trying to apply what i had done in computer engineering in marketing that's how i started and this was about a long time ago like more than 20 years back where this whole field was just turning to be more quantitative. And I think uh, I just landed to be at the right place at the right time, I think, with this. And when I started, it was not something that was uh, so popular and mainstream. But I can certainly see around the time digital uh, technology and internet started picking up. Uh, It became more and more mainstream. And... That's kind of how I started, and 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 now the two worlds have pretty much collided, and mm-hmm. uh, so I find myself fortunate to be in this place now. Okay, nice. And why do you think data is so important to whether it be a social media influencer, a store owner, you know, someone who's just making all of their money online, whether it be by social e-commerce services, whatever it may be. Yeah. So data for a social media influencer is i would say the same way it is important as it is for any marketer Uh, if you can think of a social media influencer as promoting their personal brand uh, then you're thinking about your individual as a brand and managing the brand and so in that sense it is useful in pretty much the same way as you would use for any brand, uh, branded good or service. Uh, and more specifically, uh, it allows you to understand whether your message that you're sharing and the content that you're sharing is relevant and who your audience is. And also, it gives you an idea of what content would be relevant in the future, not just whether something worked well, but also what would work well in the future. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so diving into analytics for, let's say, content creators. So essentially looking at data is going to help them create their content in the future. Um, What are some key metrics or what are some key data points that people should be looking at uh, in a social media aspect or sense of things? And then also on kind of like a e-commerce side of things. 
Yeah, so those are two separate but related aspects. I'm glad you broke it into uh, social media and e-commerce. They're linked. I think with social media, to some extent, you're restricted with the data that the platform provides you, like likes and uh, bounce rates and other uh, metrics that the me that the platform provides you, but you might also want to look at engagement of your followers if that data is available which followers are more just following passively versus actively i think that is something which would be very useful to look at uh, when you look at e-commerce you're certainly looking at conversion rates in terms of how many people who are clicking are then uh, buying some of the products that are there in your store uh, and then you're looking at repeat you're looking at trial and repeat. And depending okay. on how prevalent your business is, you might look at retention rate and customer lifetime value as well. Mm, okay. And so for, for people looking to find this data, where's the best place to get data from? Like I know you can get super complex, you know, data science tools and data aggregation tools and that sort of stuff. But for someone who's like not that advanced, what's the best place to start when trying to find data to first work with to help improve, whether it be your social media profile, your store or your website? Where's where's the best place to get this data from? Yeah, so I would say uh, given the media platforms are changing so much every day, um, the specific data, more than discussing a specific kind of data from a specific platform, uh, I would advise folks to first look at the strategic objectives that they have. So I always I have a uh, tool uh, that was published in the Sloan Management Review uh, called the Marketing Analytics Canvas. What this tells is exactly the uh, situation you are bringing up here is that we tend to look at current reports, whatever data is available and make decisions based on that. So that is like looking for the keys where the light is. Uh, mm -hmm. But the idea is to first focus on the strategic objective. Are you building your follower base or are you building your e-commerce business? And mm -hmm. based on that, the data will be, uh, you will know the data that you need. Right. So I would say first things is to look at what stage of your journey you are in and what is your strategic objective first. Mm, okay. So setting goals and then figuring out what data you need to yeah. you know, achieve or improve that goal, I suppose. Yeah. I think the setting goals is important, which is a lot of times when people begin, you know, I think when you begin, okay, you want to grow followers. That is kind of, okay, you understand that. But as you gain followers, then you get into this question about, okay, I'm, I, if I open an e-commerce website, what kind of product should I be including in there? If that is your goal, then you're looking at like the diversity of products that are selling, sales rate of each product. So that's what I mean as once uh, you're looking at a strategic objective, then the data kind of comes follows the objective you're trying to achieve. Mm, okay. And so in terms of, let's say, an e-commerce store, what are the most common kind of, I suppose, marketing analytics or goals that people kind of look at? Yes. So the main thing is trial and repeat. And mm -hmm. with e-commerce, especially when you have uh, repeat customers and you can track repeat customers, you're looking at adoption rates first. The next is you're looking at uh, repeat rates, uh, how firm, how long the customers come back. Then you're looking mm -hmm. at average spend rate. So it's a combination mm -hmm. of these three. And if you project repeat rates and average spend rates, then you can get the lifetime value of the customer. The reason lifetime mm -hmm. value is important is that tells you how much you need to spend to acquire a new customer. So once you yep. know a customer is worth $100 typically for you, you know that you're not going to spend more than $100 to acquire new customers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I know, you know, it's important to have a, a cost per acquisition goal. And then it's really important to understand these numbers such as average order value, mm -hmm. conversion rate and lifetime value. 
So those things are all really important. And, you know, everybody listening should start by trying to calculate those things if you are using an e-commerce store. Now, that's well and, that's well and good on mm -hmm. a on a e-commerce store, like a Shopify store or something. Yeah. But then I think what a lot of people struggle with is how do they get these people to the store? And then uh. that's where it sort of comes into play is, you know, how do you use these social media platforms to get yes. the traffic there and yes. what sort of goals we should be setting on the social media side. Uh, ideally, yes. click-through rate, I suppose. But are there any common metrics that social media accounts or people should be looking at uh, specifically to help them get more traffic to their site? So I think click-through rates are important, but uh, one of the th common... Um, one of the things that are overlooked but is important is also some people may like the content and the likes of that person can influence someone else's purchase. So it's like the mm. uh, amplifying of the social media platform, which is important to consider. Mm. And so okay. one of the things you can look at is are there some customers, if they like your content, are you seeing sales go up, right? Yep. Maybe not them individually, but others seeing it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so what's the, so say you're getting started, what's the best way to look at all of this data? Is it in a spreadsheet? Is it a tool? What's the best way to kind of try and match back like what you're doing on social media to what's happening in terms of sales, whether it's selling a service, content or e-commerce or whatever you're selling. What's the best way to kind of visualize this or track this? Um, if someone's yes. kind of just getting started? Yes. Um, I think um, depending on how much data you're talking about, it's either Excel or um, Tableau. Uh, those mm -hmm. would be good uh, tools for visualizing. Uh, Tableau, once you have a little more data, like, you know, you have like, you know, thousands of customers in there or followers, tens of thousands, and Tableau can give you some slicing and dicing that is better. When you have less than mm -hmm. ten thousand, you're not you're looking at the whole group, not you know looking at subgroups. When you mm -hmm. have subgroups, then you go into more complicated uh, visualizing tools like Tableau. Mm, okay, so start out with like a Google Sheets or an Excel, yeah. kind of track your your core metrics. So yeah. the post, the date, revenue, mm -hmm. trailing revenue, yeah. uh, click through rates, that sort of thing. Yeah, um, and, and then one thing, once you get big enough, go to Tableau. Yes. And I, one thing I would add is when you're looking at, even when you're looking in Excel, the key to look at is by content that you post. Mm -hmm. So can you look at, so the idea is to whichever content you're posting to look at, like, what are the classifications of this content, right? Not just any content, but when you're posting, have a sense of strategic idea about why you're posting this content and what is this objective that the content is meant to achieve. Right? Is it something about boosting followers? Is it something about boosting share? Look, so have an objective for that content, and then look at the metrics in like you know cross tabulated with the content objectives. Mm -hmm. That gives you a better insight than just tracking shares or likes over time. Mm, okay, yeah. So I think a a lot of content creators will create. Uh, or oh, well, what I've seen from the successful ones we've interviewed is they'll have content buckets. So you have, you yeah. know, maybe three or four different content buckets which are focused on certain topics. And mm -hmm. then, so it sounds like what you want to also do is look to see which topic is driving the most revenue. Yes. Um, based off, you know, the time of the post and how much revenue there was trailing that post. Yeah. Um, okay, super interesting. Um, and then in terms, of, in terms of kind of those are things people should do, is there anything people shouldn't be doing? Are there any mistakes that you constantly see when brands yeah. or people try and use data? Like there's so much of it. It's really hard to kind of like know what to do, but are there any big mistakes or things that people should avoid when they're trying to start using data to better improve their social content or following or revenue or whatever it may be? Yeah. So uh, two things I would say. One is, um, and the two related things. One is jumping into the data without knowing what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, one, because I have data, I'm going to do a lot of cross tabulations that really leads to getting into rabbit holes and not like just swimming in data, but not understanding what to do. 
I think mm-hmm. spending time thinking about the analysis and the objectives of the analysis is more important than really delving into the data. So that is mm-hmm. the first one I would say is to definitely look out for. The second I would say is I've seen people do a lot of A-B tests, but not really think about like the design of the tests. Mm-hmm. So again, goes back to what I was saying about think through the, uh, before looking in the data, in terms of analysis, I said, before looking into the data, look at like why you're looking at it. The same way before running these different tests and posting the different contents, think about, spend some time thinking about why you're doing it and why you're testing it and what metrics you're going to track and for how long. Because Mm -hmm. if you don't have a track of that, some kind of spreadsheet or project management that allows you to track this content, then you're just posting Mm -hmm. content and then back end you're trying to understand what happened. And with experiments, you need to be like, you know, only one aspect of your content should be manipulated. Or if you're manipulating two or three, you need to know which uh, subgroup was exposed to one kind of treatment versus the other. So to know Mm -hmm. that you need to, as you get more and more, uh, if you're driving uh, content on multiple dimensions, you need the discipline up front to design that experiment well, so that when mm-hmm. the back end, when you collect the data, you know how to analyze it. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, kind of what we suggest with the, some of the brands that we work with is just planning out uh, in a Google Sheet, just each mm-hmm. test that you're going to do, do one test a month, um, mm-hmm. have what you're testing, the goal, the metrics are going to go into that goal, and then what the outcome should be and then you know just start out super simple and then we're always suggesting to start with just like one a month so you look at yeah. okay we're going to do this all of january let's see if it helps improve the goal yeah. that we're trying to get absolutely um, yeah i think starting simple is a lot easier and you know as you get more advanced you start doing more advanced tests you start using things like tableau and those uh you know pretty robust analytical tools yeah. that sort of thing um but yeah starting simple is always the best way I would say, you know, the best metrics that we've seen social media's track, I think is, you know, it's obviously click through rates, share rates and comments. Mm-hmm. I think those three metrics are important for the social media influences, what we've seen. Yeah. And then on site, as you were mentioning, I think it's, you know, the click through rate, the bounce rate, uh, oh, sorry, the, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, the click through rate to the website, the bounce rate, time on site, and then revenue and conversion rate pretty much. So, Absolutely. you know, you don't really need to track too much. Um, and we also suggest like Google analytics and that sort of thing. Do you have any suggestions on website tracking at all or like for tools or anything like that? Website tracking, Google analytics, like you said, is the best. I mean, if you have HubSpot, it is good because it kind of gives you in one space, all the things that you want, like web hosting and content building and, but Mm -hmm. these tools are getting complex. And so, uh, I would really look at the platform like Google or like, you know, the platforms have the simplest technique and especially if you're a social media influencer, it's much better Mm -hmm. to stick with the platform base rather than go into a much more complex system. Got it. Okay. So anybody out there who's just getting started, use the analytics from the social platforms, use Google analytics. Um, If you're using a Shopify or WordPress, there'll also be analytics in there, but don't overcomplicate it. And then Google Sheets is your best friend. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Because I think you're, you're totally right in it. Don't make the analysis. Don't spend too much time trying to learn the tool, right? Mm. Focus on the business, focus on the content. That is the important thing I would say. And the yeah. more you can look at analyzing at the content level, the better off you're going to be. So that you understand yep. exactly the content that can work. Hmm. Okay. And so diving into a little bit more about, you know, your books and your course and that sort of stuff, Mm -hmm. what sort of content have you included in there? What do you think was the most important stuff that you put into those books? Um, And what do you think readers get out of it? So my focus has always been on the bridge between analytics and marketing strategy. So my books are not really, I wouldn't say they are books that are, they're 
they are technique heavy there are techniques in there they are sophisticated but the but the key insights are always around how do you connect the analytics to your business objectives and strategy and mm-hmm. so my focus has always been on that bridge between mm-hmm. uh, strategy and analytics got it and so when you're say you're consulting with someone or just start working with a new brand what do you usually suggest them do to get started in finding that bridge or even understanding what that bridge is yes so uh, the that's a excellent question and what came out of that from i have over years figured out like nine questions that work for this and those questions i have like published as the marketing analytics canvas which mm, is okay. available with the mit sloan review they published that canvas and that is uh, i would recommend that is pretty much my process really whenever i work with a client is to go through those nine questions and they're sequentially ordered and it's in like a canvas form that you can use so they include like you know strategic objectives what are the business challenges you know uh, mm-hmm. where do you get data stuff like that so i think yeah. i spend a lot of time in that before jumping mm-hmm. into the data it helps not just me but also i find the client's team to get aligned on like with each other and to understand mm-hmm. as a team what their goals are Okay. Got it. And I noticed you did a few books and you also did an online course. Mm-hmm. Out of your experience, what has been more successful? What do you think you would advise, you know, yes. other teachers and content creators to do? To go down yeah. the book route or to do the online course route? What do you think's best? So, it's both because they feed each other. So, mm-hmm. uh so um the books uh, have been uh, like because the online courses need content and the content is in the books so the way mm-hmm. i think about it is the books are like the content and i'm distributing the content across different mediums through my online courses through my writing through uh, my courses in like the phys- like live courses in the university right so mm. definitely the reach is highest with the online massive moocs and such the reach is much higher um mm. but the i feel like my engagement personal engagement and the, st- the students engagement with the topic and learning is much higher obviously when it is live either online or face to face but mm-hmm. it cannot be done for many like more people can access the moocs rather than the face to face but i've always uh, used the content in the books as the main source of all the uh, the books remain the source of the content and then i package it in different ways and distribute it across different mediums mm. okay very interesting so answer is both <laughs> answer is both yeah and they have to feed each other because life it's just yeah. you don't have too many hours in the day right you kind of have to have like synergy in the work you do and that's kind of what i always try to do mm okay super interesting um and this question I'm kind of interested in where do you see data usage analytics the importance of it going in 2022 um you know it's yeah. built mm-hmm. more and more popularity and importance over time but where do you think it's going this year uh absolutely so 2022 is hard to predict a year specifically <laughs> and in general i tend to not do predictions because once you make predictions that's the one thing that will not be turn out to be true having <laughs> said all that caveats i can see that it is going to be more usage than less um mm-hmm. i see over time if i can look beyond 2022 if i may and over like the next 5 year horizon i would definitely see uh data science getting commoditized mm-hmm. but the use of data getting more and more strategic and mm. uh, right so the how you do the analysis i think tools like tableau and others will include a lot more sophistication in data science and there'll be a lot more predictive tools that will get automated so the yeah. premium is going to be on the strategic questions and knowing what to analyze and gaining the insights from that 
Yeah, and it's also interesting to see the access to data and how that's going to change over this next year. Because I know, mm-hmm. you know, we do a lot of advertising on all the different social platforms and Apple restricting data and then Google removing cookies in browsers soon. Uh, you know, all of these things are going to impact the amount of data we can get. Um, any insights into mm-hmm. best solutions to that? Yes. So it is going to be challenging. And the focus then needs to be on direct relationships with your consumers. I think wherever you have the privacy challenges, it happens because you are getting third party data indirectly and not directly from the customer. Mm -hmm. And the imperative for social media platforms and influencers the, the, the benefit they have is they have a direct relationship with the consumers. Consumers are following the influencers. And so uh, developing that and creating blogs and developing your own uh, websites and platforms outside of the web, social media platforms is going to be mm-hmm. important because then yep. you can have a direct relationships. Yep. So things like building up what email lists, phone numbers Mm -hmm. and SMS lists, WhatsApp groups, those sorts of things. Mm, Yeah, absolutely. And like anything you can do to directly reach the consumers and keep the engagement going is going to be at a premium for sure. Mm. Yeah. So email and phone numbers have been around for a very, very long time and they seem to be the Holy grail because they're not owned by anybody really. Yeah. Uh, is there anything that you see ever replacing email and phone, or is that always going to be the two things you want to collect? No, like things you said, like WhatsApp groups, or uh, you know, depending on the community, like LinkedIn could be something like LinkedIn groups, or uh, so those are some other things that could uh, be there as well. Because sometimes people don't want to share their personal emails in a group, mm. but they might be able to be in like WhatsApp or Slack or any other channels like that. Mm. Okay. Well, this has been super insightful. Um, A lot of great information. Um, Raj, is there anything else that you'd like to share? Uh, Where can we find out more about your books and your your marketing Mm -hmm. canvas? I think that would be really good. So I'm sure a lot of listeners want to find out what those nine questions are so they can better help, you know, strategize and use analytics better. Uh, but yeah, anything else you'd like to share? Where can we find you? Uh, what's the best way to get in touch? That sort of thing. Yeah. So you can, uh, my uh, email is on my university website and on aimcbook.com. Uh, the books are on Amazon. I have courses on Coursera Marketing Analytics and AI Marketing. And the uh, Canvas is in Sloan Management Review that's published. And they also have a PDF that can be downloaded. And so, yeah, so different places, but uh, nice. I'm, I need to have my own social media influence strategy. I think. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm on LinkedIn, so that's my social media. I'm on LinkedIn, so you can connect with mm-hmm. me on LinkedIn and that connects with everything else. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, Fantastic. I'll add all those links and thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. And uh, I'll add all those links that I said. Um, yeah, really appreciate you sharing all this info and we'll chat soon. Thanks, Raj. Thank you. Great conversation. Hey guys, we put a bunch of effort into making great content for this YouTube channel. So please hit subscribe, uh, leave us a comment, hit like, and tell a few friends about it.